The information contained in this video is intended for educational purposes. We are not responsible for any damage to your device resulting from improper disassembly or installation. Proceed at your own risk. Hey, it's Mike from GoCellPhoneRepair.com, and today we're going to remove and replace the screen on an iPhone 6. This is actually brand new out of the package. We didn't have a broken one just yet, but uh, we wanted to get inside here and see just how complicated this is going to be. Um, you're going to need a pentalobe driver as well as a small Phillips driver. But um, the nice thing is this is very similar to the 5 and the 5S. So we'll go ahead and take the plastic off here. And down at the bottom where the charging port is located, we have two pentalobe screws that are going to be removed. And thank you, Apple, for not changing the charger this time. We can continue to use our old data cables and chargers in case we want to spare. Of course, the phone does come with one. Um, these two screws will come out from the bottom and the interesting thing is you will not need a razor blade or a flat uh, metal pry tool or anything like that. You can actually get into the bottom of the phone with a regular thin pry tool and we always prefer to use something plastic whenever we're prying on glass or metal. So if you have a nice thin triangle or um, anything that's got a pretty light gauge on it, you'll be able to get in down here at the bottom. Another nice thing about this, no cable running from the... Uh, fingerprint scanner to the logic board so you don't have to worry about tearing that flex cable when you open it up. So another nice uh, design here. We keep thinking that one of these days Apple's just going to throw something at us that we do not want to work on, but uh, that's not going to be today apparently because this phone is actually pretty uh, repair friendly. So again, looking a lot like the iPhone 5, 5S on the inside, you can lift it up from the bottom and then disengage the tabs at the top by pulling the display down towards the bottom end of the phone. From here, we're going to lift this up, and you don't, again, want to let this flop over and fall down. If you do, it'll put stress on those cables. Now, before you take the display off, make sure that you remove these two screws down here from the panel that holds the battery terminal connection because we always want to disconnect the power as soon as possible. We kind of got ahead of ourselves a little bit here, so I'm showing you now where you can get access to the battery terminal and go ahead and disconnect this. And from here, you can go ahead and proceed to remove the display. So up here at the top, you're going to have a panel with five screws. And we'll just go ahead and take these all out. And there are no funny clips or anything. You literally just take the screws out and remove the plate. Uh, very similar to the iPhone 5C, except for the addition of that one screw in the very middle of the panel. All right, we'll go ahead and set the panel aside, and then we're going to have four flex cables that need to be disconnected from the logic board. So you want to take a thin pry tool or one of the old iPhone opening tools works really well for here. The main thing, of course, is to just be very gentle and don't pull too hard anything here. You want to make sure that you don't cause any damage to the cables as you're disconnecting it. Of course, you'll probably be uh, replacing your entire display. So that won't be as much of a factor, but there are some other cables that are connected to important stuff at the top there. So down here, we're going to have two screws on the retaining plate that go over the home button at the bottom. Go ahead and take those out first. And then we can go ahead and move this plate out of the way. Up here at the top, we're going to have a screw that goes through the uh, rear display um, backplate, if you will. And then we've got another one down here on the bottom, as well as six that go along the sides. Now, this is a little bit different. Uh, this is more like the 3G and 3GS. We had six screws way back in the day. And then, of course, with the 5 and the 5S, they only had the two. You've actually got three. so. We'll go ahead and take these out and set them aside.
And I'm sure you uh, got the idea, so we'll go ahead and speed this up here so we can get this other three out. Now you want to be careful because before you start prying, there's a cable that needs to be disconnected down here at the bottom. And there's also a little bit of adhesive you're going to have to work around. So always a good idea to have a heat gun on hand to kind of warm this stuff up so it becomes more pliable. But uh, most importantly, make sure that you disconnect that cable because part of this is going to come out with the back plate. Now we've got two screws that are holding a retaining panel in place at uh, right behind the earpiece. You can take those out and do take note that this panel actually tucks underneath the back plate of the LCD. So you'll see that when we put it back together later on in the video. And you can see the front facing camera and the speaker underneath will actually come out at this point and you can kind of peel that cable back. But again, you'll probably deal with a little bit of adhesive there. And then of course the plate is gonna lift out here and make sure you take note of the situation that those flex cables are in so we get everything back in the same position. And then down here, as I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you don't tear anything. So you'll have to kind of get underneath here with your pry tool. Again, if you have some heat, warm that up. It'll make it a lot easier to work with. And then we're going to go ahead and get all the way underneath this connector at the bottom because, again, that is going to be part of the back plate. So this is very important. We don't want to rip this because we are going to have to transfer this over to the new display more than likely, unless you can buy a, a complete display. If so, um, it's going to be a very quick repair on this one, but uh, generally they don't come that way. Again, using a heat gun will make your life a lot easier and a lot safer when it comes to removing adhesives and cables that are held in place by anything sticky. You can see eventually our tech just kind of grabbed a hold of the plate and peeled it off the rest of the way. So most importantly, take your time and I'm sure you can get it out without breaking anything. There's a possibility that your replacement screen may need to have these plastic pieces transferred over as well. The um, cover for the front facing camera and the proximity sensor guide. So uh, don't throw anything away until you see a replacement part and make sure that you have everything moved over. Now you have some more adhesive underneath, underneath this cable here at the top. So again, if you apply some heat, this will make it easier, but you can go ahead and get inside here with a pry tool and pull this whole piece off from the top. And a lot of this stuff is going to be very similar to the iPhone 5 and 5S. So if you haven't already uh, worked on a 5 or 5S, I recommend that you check out my 5S screen replacement video or the 5. And that will kind of give you a better idea as to how those little plastic pieces can be transferred. And also take note, if you're watching this on a mobile device, you're not going to be able to see any information that I add to the video later on. We'll definitely have updates on this repair. So... Uh, please check the video description or take a look at my channel and anytime we put out a new video it may have some new information that you'll find helpful. 
Now at the bottom, you can use some heat to take the home button out. Again, that's demonstrated in the 5 and 5S videos. There's not much to it. It's just a rubber gasket that goes around the back of the button. And you do have to use some heat and be very careful when you're taking it out. But nothing major down there. Up here at the top, you want to make sure that the proximity sensor seats properly inside of that little plastic piece, as well as the front-facing camera. That, those are there for a reason. The plastic piece on the camera keeps the dust out, and the proximity sensor guide keeps it lined up. And because these are very very precise. You have to make sure they go into the right position, otherwise your screen is not going to shut off while you're on the phone. Now we're going to go ahead and set the middle plate back against the back of the display, but keep in mind the retaining plate at the top actually tucks underneath that. So in just a moment here you'll see how he installs that. And this is kind of the tricky part. You've got to get the speaker in place, the cable in place, and hold everything together while you put the plate on top and get a couple screws in. So if you've got an extra hand or a clamp, that'll make your life a lot easier. Um, there's not really a super easy way to do it again unless you've got some assistance. So you want to get everything seated in there properly. Tuck the right hand side of that panel underneath the back of the rear plate and then go ahead and get some screws in here to hold this in place. Also, if your new display does not come with any pads on the back of the flex cables, you want to remove the old ones and transfer them over. Those pads will help keep everything plugged in properly, and it prevents accidental grounding, so those are very important as well. So we put our top and bottom screw in, and of course we've got the six that go along the side that we're going to add shortly. Make sure you get this cable stuck back on into the same position it was in before we took the phone apart. You can always rewind if you want to see it again. And then of course connect your uh, flex cable down there at the bottom. We've got a retaining plate for the home button that goes behind it. And it's actually more than a retaining plate. It actually allows the home button to click by... Um, adding support behind the center of the button where the um, where the little dome is on the inside. All right, so go ahead and get our six screws installed on the side. Make sure you do not forget about those. And if you've worked on iPhones before, at this point you're probably thinking, yeah, a little bit harder than a 5C, um, probably on about the same level as the 5S as far as uh, uh, difficulty goes. Now, you'll note that we have our, di our battery disconnected at the bottom. We want to make sure we don't plug that in until we actually connect all the cables for the display. And at that point, we'll go ahead and plug everything in and just do a test run, make sure it's working out okay before we put all the retaining plates back into place. All right, so everything seems to be working okay. We'll go ahead and power down again. And we're actually resting the display against something. I know you can't see it inside of the frame, but Again, you don't want that thing to be falling all the way over onto the table, so make sure you prop it up when you have this open. That way it doesn't put any stress on these cables on the inside. And we'll go ahead and put the retaining plate in on top of those. And of course, if you check the link in the video description, 
or if you're not on a mobile device, you can actually click on any of the pop-ups that appear in the video if you'd like to see additional information on the repair, replacement parts, tools, and so forth. One more plate down over the battery terminal. Now when you put it, the phone back together, you want to make sure that you tuck the upper end inside of the frame. There are some tabs there that hold everything in place because obviously that's all there is at the top. So you want to make sure you get that tucked in and then very gently work your way down the sides and make sure that everything snaps in. You should not have to apply much pressure. Remember it is still possible to break glass, but you should have a nice flush um, everything basically around the outside of the phone should be lined up. You shouldn't have anything sticking out. And then of course we can go ahead and put the pentalobe screws back into the bottom. And there you have it. If you found the video helpful, hit the like button and feel free to share it on the social network platform of your choice. Check out some of my recent repair and product review videos and visit us on the web at gocellphonerepair.com. Thanks for watching.